Thank you. Thank you. Wine to the people. Hey everybody, East Village Wine Geek here, and I'm continuing my obsession or series on Languedoc Roussillon. Today I want to talk about three places, Minervois, Corbier, and Fitou. Awesome places for wine. These are the wines you're gonna see on the wine on the, on the shelves in your wine shop. So let's talk about these three separately and get a really nice understanding about the awesomeness. We're gonna start with Minervois because it's the northern most northern region. Then we're gonna work our way southwest and we're gonna hit the Pyrenees with V2. Minervois is named after a little town in that area called Minerve. Just like everywhere else. In the Languedoc Roussillon, Carillon has been around for a very long time. But as we've talked about before, there's a list of, of grapes they use in, in this modern time that are kind of starting to give these, these different places an identity. Minervois was made an AOC. It was given its appellation status in 1985. And when a government when the government recognizes a place to make wine, they start to create rules and laws and guidelines so that people can recognize these wines anywhere in the world, and so you, you form a tradition, and that, that is kind of what gives the place its identity. Minervois is a uh, wine region that primarily has Syrah and Mavedra as the main grapes as their blend. They're very supple, beautiful red wines. Uh, you have to have at least 20% of Syrah or Mavedra, which are called improving varieties into your blend, and then you can do whatever you want after that. You can put Carignan in it or any other kind of indigenous varietal that they allow within that little AOC or appellation. So what we have here is a very affordable red wine. The beauty of this place is it's, it's, it's northern, so you still get the the, the, the Mediterranean climate influence, but you have a more of a hilly area. So the soil's a little more a little more drainy, it's a little more rustic. The grapes allow for a little bit more plushness. So when you make these blends, it's usually gonna be an herbaceous, plushy, medium-bodied red wine that's very soft on the palate and very good acidity. The acidity kind of allows it to kind of brighten up and it doesn't make it too cloying or heavy on the palate. These are beautiful wines and just we should all start drinking Mini Bois. <laughs> then we go south from Mini Bois and we hit this huge area called Corbiere. Corbiere is the largest appellation, sub-appellation within the Coteau du Languedoc. And the thing about this area is we talked about Carignan, I'll be mentioning Carignan a lot. In this area, they allow Carignan up to 70% of the blend, which is unique because they're trying to get, a lot of places in this area are trying to get rid of the Carignan as a prominent varietal. But on the American market, you're not gonna see a lot of Carignan-based Corbiere. You're gonna see a lot of Syrah, Grenache, and then Carignan will be a part of it. If you find a Corbiere with that's primarily Carignan, you're tasting Straight up old school Corbiere. Old oh, school. Radical. It's very good, very earthy, dry, like a, a very thin line of soil and tannin, just like a little dark running through it. And the fruit is very rustic and, and like has a lot of dusty tannins and soil. It's beautiful. But because Corbiere is so big, they have a couple departments. Depending on where the Corbiere was made, it can have different levels of intensity. There's the Corbiere towards the towards the coast, there's the Corbiere towards the middle of the area, and there's the Corbiere of the north. But no matter where you get it, it's going to be soft and beautiful and earthy and rustic. And it's perfect to bring to a party, perfect for for any kind of dinner. Oh lamb, I hope you have Corbiere. Me too. Again, very affordable wines. This is how we introduce ourselves to French wine. This is beautiful stuff. Now we're gonna go south to an ancient place called Fitou. Now we're going even further south, but this is a very interesting area. We are now in the foothills of the Pyrenees Mountains. We are now on the border of Roussillon, but before we talk about that, we have to talk about Fitou. It's very important. So as I said, Corbiere is a is a, is a very large appellation. Towards the southern part of Corbiere, there are these two little areas that are bisected by the Corbiere region. It's called Fitou. 
Sufi II is the oldest wine appellation in the Languedoc. It was given its, it was given its appellation status in 1948. Because it's so old, yes, Carignan is the dominant varietal, but man, did they know how to do their blends. The northern part of Fitu and the southern part of Fitu are not extremely different, but they have definite, significant, diff different characteristics from each other. They have one they call the Maritime Fitu, and they have one called the Mountain Fitu, mountain being the foothills of the, of the, of the Pyrenees. Carignan-based blends, and then you have Morvedra and Syrah and Grenache holding that tannic Carignan up, giving it some depth and character and some earth. All these wines are just dripping with earthiness. I mean, it's just like soft soil, beautiful depth. In the, in the northern part of Fitu, the wines are a little more structured, a little more lean. The tannin structure is a little more prominent. The earthy soil notes are a little more prominent. The acidity bursts through the fruit and kind of kind of rounds it out a little bit, but keeps it nice and lean because it is in the foothills of the, of the, uh, of the Pyrenees. In the southern part of Fitu, the maritime Fitu, you get all that beautiful stuff I just talked about, but with a little more fruit. There's more sun, the grapes produce a little bit more sugar, reduce the acidity a little bit more, so you have a little more depth and plushness. Your wine merchant should know exactly what I'm talking about. If not, give me a call. So this is sort of a crash course on um, the three most important, well, they're not the most important, but three of the most well-known areas in the Languedoc Roussillon where you're going to be finding wine. Now, just so you know, these three areas do white wine, but red wine is really what Languedoc is all about. But when it comes to white wine, we can talk about this more in Roussillon, but there are amazing, amazing white varietals available in these areas. They make great white wines. You don't always see them on the American market. We're starting to see them a little bit more. But Marsan, Roussan, sometimes Viognier, Grenache Blanc, these wines are increasingly in beautiful aromatics, bright acidity, and sometimes they have a little bit of depth to them, like a musky depth, but we'll talk about all that when it comes to Roussillon. But in, in these areas, Corbière, Minervois, and Fitu, you do find white wines, and your wine merchant may not have them because they're not asked for, or they're not in high demand, but I'm hoping soon they will be. Maybe this series will be something that sparks a spark. We are now in the foothills of the Pyrenees. We're now in a place called Roussillon, which at one time was was Spain. So next week we're gonna get nice with uh, Roussillon. See you then. Thank you, thank you. Wine to the people. Wine to the people, people.